This problem is for white to live. It is a very classic problem. And my guess is that if you're a beginner or a lower level amateur player, you haven't figured out how to make a living shape here. So let me give you a hint. Right, you have to play something here on the corner. And at the risk of giving the whole solution away, right, white's first move should be this. Right? You can take this move and think about it for yourself and see what happens. So you can pause the video, try again, and come back for the answer. This problem I remember very vividly. When I was starting to learn Go, I couldn't solve this problem. It's so annoying because you're thinking about how to make a living shape here, right? Without thinking about the corner. And that's very hard. The only two ways for white to do this is to try the tiger's mouth here or here, but it's really parallel. So they're pretty much the same. And black can just cut in here. And this is a really sharp move because it's threatening to, to capture these two white stones, right? And white will easily fail if it ignores number two. But if it captures number two, what black can do is this Atari here, right? Black has Sente here, and black can destroy this eye with number six. So doing the tiger's mouth here will not work for white because of this cutting point. And this will be similar, right? This will be similar. And the other move is to try to increase eye space. But this also doesn't work, right? Um, so in this case, black can either play here, right? If white plays this, then these three will be captured. If white captures these two, then black can destroy this eye, right? Or black can even play this, right? This will be a dead shape. This will be a dead shape. And this will also be a dead shape, right? Notes that white cannot come in here. So white can only capture and this will become a false eye. So number one will not work. Similarly, this will not work either, right? So what do you do? And the key here really is for white to play this move here. What's happening now is that black has really only two choices or three, right? Stand down here, connect here, or play here, right? Because black cannot afford to let white capture this stone like this, right? If white captures this stone, then white is able to live very comfortably here on the corner. So let's say black connects here. What white can do now is to play this move. So you're saying this move doesn't really increase white's eye space, right? So what difference does it make? The difference it makes is that it's threatening to make an extra real eye here on the corner, right? White can make a real eye here on the corner. This three space eye is one real eye. And white will have at least one real eye here, right? So white will be able to succeed this way if it gets to play at number five. So black will prevent white from making an extra eye here on the corner. So black will play at number four, right? This way, um, white will not have a real eye. But white shouldn't play this exchange. White should leave it here. And now with number three's help, white will succeed. Why? Because now white can play this. Black will cut. Now what happens is that white can play here. And these two points will be me eye for black all of a sudden. Because white is no longer afraid of being captured by black, right? These four stones are connected. Here's an extra liberty at the 2-1 point. So if black plays here, white will be able to win this race to capture and capture these two stones. So by playing at number one and three, white actually bought more liberties for these two stones. And they're able to succeed against black's number six and eight. So that's what's really fascinating about this pattern is that by playing at one and three, it doesn't build any eyes. It does not increase eye space. What it really does is it's buying liberties for these two white stones in this subsequent exchange. And that's really fascinating.
So if black's number two is here, then this is similar, right? Black cannot allow white to capture this stone because this way white will also have a real eye here. So black must connect here, and now we're back to the previous variation. Notes that black cannot succeed this way, right? This will be a living shape. This will also be a living shape, right? For this. So with one, three, and five, white is able to live. Lastly, let's consider this move, right? This is probably black's sharpest move. And what white needs to do is to cut here, right? Sacrificing one and three. Black has to cut, otherwise white will capture these two black stones. And now what white can do is to Atari. Black must capture. And now the answer should be pretty obvious. White will be able to live like this. Using black's shortage of liberties and sacrificing one and three, white is able to play at five, as sente, right? And then play at number seven. So white gets to play two consecutive moves because of one and three's sacrifice. And this is also a really neat solution. So overall, I know this solution is probably unexpected for beginners and amateurs, but it's a pretty neat problem to know. You're definitely going to see this again in other problem books. And it's kind of cool to know this classic pattern and how to solve it. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them below, and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for watching.